Hi, I'm Andre, and now that our Grand Handling as a Job series is well underway, we thought that it would be useful to do a Grand Handling Theory video. In the beginning of this week has been really bad weather, so it might be a good place to put this one here now. This week, I'd like to talk about how Bernoulli and Newton look at a wing and how that helps make me make sense of what is happening to my paraglider when I'm ground handling. Okay, so the textbook explanation on how a wing creates lift is pretty common. When an airfoil shape is exposed to a stream of air, the air on top travels faster than the air on the bottom. According to Bernoulli's principle, air travelling fast exerts less pressure on a surface than air travelling slow. This creates a pressure difference between the top and bottom of the wing, which means that the net force is up and that's what we call lift. A completely different way to look at this is with Newton's third law. For every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. If a parcel of air comes across an airfoil, it gets pushed down and forward. This means that the airfoil itself has to be pushed up and back, lift and drag. You can try this with water instead of air and a spoon instead of a wing. The spoon deflects the water to the right and as a result it gets pulled to the left. This stuff is happening all around you all the time. Air flowing through things, getting deflected and those things being pushed around as a result. Because paragliders are very flexible they get into strange shapes all the time and I find applying Newton's principle helps me visualize what's happening. I just have to visualize where the air is going and I know that that portion of the wing is going in the opposite direction. If the wing is sitting still, air is being deflected up. If it's going up, it means it's pushing air down. And if you manage to keep it just balanced so it doesn't go up or down, you know that that's quite tricky. And the explanation is because you're trying to balance the two flows of air above and below the wing to be exactly the same. Actually, there has to be slightly more air coming out the bottom than the top to support the four or five kilos that the wing might weigh. This is also the case in three dimensions across the span of the wing. For instance, if the wing doesn't come up straight, one side is pushing more air down than the other. So that's just the way I think about ground handling and what line to pull at different times. I try to see the wing as an obstruction to the airflow and imagine where the air is going after it hits that obstruction. And generally the wing goes the opposite way. Hope that it was useful and if you have your own specific way to look at how wings work, let me know in the comments. I also want to say a big thank you to our awesome sponsors, BGD and everyone on Patreon. When you support our sponsors, you're also supporting the channel. Also, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already, and we'll see you tomorrow. Bye.